you've always fancied yourself a 4x4. Four four. But they're all such thirsty, fuel guzzling things that cost a fortune to run, aren't they? Well, no, because it turns out that this exists. The Fiat Panda 4x4. Four four. Very tight hairpin coming up here. Can we get round in one? Of course we can. Look at that. Well, as you can see, I've just arrived at the local Methodist church for the church coffee morning. But there's a problem, I mean, look how tight the car park is. I'm 86, I've got every ailment under the sun, and I'm in this four-wheel drive with such heavy power steering. What am I going to do? Well, I'll show you. Now, like I say, the steering oh, is so heavy, I mean, it's unmanageable. But if I press this button here, city, look at that. The steering becomes light as a feather. So at 86, I think I can manage to park up here just fine. Look at that. Straight in. Oh, but I want to go in the space behind. Oh, look at that. Oh. So light, so smooth. Now this is the first Fiat I've ever had that hasn't had to be towed straight onto a trailer and taken to a scrapyard. It's actually the first Fiat I've ever driven on the road. Which I'm starting to regret because almost immediately it's gone into limp mode. This is also the first car I've ever had where I've had to unscrew a plastic cover just to access the OBD port. Clearly Fiat's are renowned for their reliability and this plastic cover is intended as a permanent fixture. Anyway, the diagnostics machine suggests that uh, there's a fault with the EGR valve. I'd imagine it was probably clogged up, which makes sense because these cars are only owned by little old women called Ethel that uh, use the car once a week to go to a church coffee morning. And they set off in fifth gear and stay in fifth gear for the whole day. So the engine never gets any work. So I've run into a problem because I don't have little Italian pasta fingers. Uh, my hand, or I don't think anyone else's hand in this part of Europe, would actually be able to fit down there and get to the EGR valve without slitting it open and looking like it's just been through a cheese grater. So what I'm going to do is um, I'm just going to spray some brake cleaner into this orifice down here. Well, and hopefully it'll do something. If it doesn't, well, it's not my problem. I'm selling it. an hour oh you know it handles surprisingly well and I get the feeling that I can really put my foot down if I want because if I career off the side of the road I've got this diff lock four-wheel drive to help me get out of any sticky situations this car is it's adequate oh see she stops well stops career into this Land Rover I mean, one of the reasons I'm driving round in this actually is because it's been stood a while and the uh, brake pads are just a giant, sorry, brake discs are just giant wheels of rust so I'm trying to get them cleaned up before I sell it. I don't know how it passed an MOT like this but... Uh... Well, as I was saying about the brakes being good before, I mean, they're that good that I'm actually sat uh, on this uh, incline, uh, the handbrake's off, my foot's on the clutch and uh, the car's not moving at all. Ooh. 12 months test. Well, let's have a look inside. Well, as you can see in the front, there's absolutely nothing. I mean, it's absolute poverty spec. The only interesting thing is the uh, button for the electronic locking diff. I mean, I suppose it's expected that uh, it would be poverty spec. I mean. If you're darting around the streets of Naples, I mean, there's some terrible drivers. You don't want any distractions whatsoever. You want it as simple as possible. I did think this was a service record, but it's not. There is no service history with this car. But what it is, is a document telling you where you can get your Fiat serviced. So, 
apparently you've got to go to Germany. We've got uh, Autohaus Kiel, Negerhaus Berlin, Autohaus Schmidt. Yeah, it's no wonder this car's never been serviced, is it? It's a long way to go for an oil change. In the back, it's even worse. There's absolutely nothing. It's even got windy windows. Not that it really matters, because, I mean, unless you're a little Italian spaghetti hoop man, or called Kyle, no one can actually fit in the back seats anyway. How can they? Clearly, the Italians have thought about the export market. And because the boot is so big in this car, all you have to do is pull on this, and the seats come all the way back, leaving enough room in the back for the whole of the local darts team. And if you're concerned about the remaining boot space, there's still enough room. your tray full of wine, tomatoes and pasta. And moving the seats back has revealed this nice little Italian toolkit with not one but two towing eyes. So when you do break down you have to get towed off you can still use that one to stir your spaghetti and your little Italian camping stove. Now of course being a 4x4 people rave about the abilities of this car. So let's see how well it handles these treacherous winter conditions. Look at it. I think the Scandinavians have been awe of these conditions. Now I have actually been stuck here in a Toyota Hilux when it wasn't snowing. So how's this going to fare? Oh god, we've got in a bit of a, a rut there. So let's go further into it. Is she going to reverse out? Oh, oh, just didn't go the way I wanted to, but try again. Bloody hell, this is amazing. Now this track here is pretty rough at the best of times, I mean, the farmers around here, you know, they can all afford a brand new truck, but they can't afford to do any basic maintenance. Oh, fuck me. You know, you are meant to go a lot slower than this, on, you know, when you're off-roading, but it won't make for very good for you, it, so. There we go, a local farmer. Reverse back down this treacherous truck. Fuck me. I should have cleared my mirrors before I set off. Fucking, I don't remember it being this bloody long. an abrupt end to that off-roading expedition because I'm not going all the way back up there again. So that's that, it's uh, very good. I mean, I'm going down this slushy, but very slippy hill and it's not spiralled out of control yet. So, you know, if I'm some little old woman who's just been to the local farm for some eggs and it's started snowing, I think, I think I'll be all right. I see. Polaris Ranger. Complete waste of money when you could just buy one of these. Well, this piece of road looks horrendous, so let's try it. Bogged down. 
Oh, uh, we're not getting up here, like. Oh, uh, we're definitely not getting up here. Look at that, that's amazing. We're completely stuck there and it just, just pulled out. It's, it's just gonna, can't get any traction, it's just, just bogging down in the middle. I mean, we could probably just keep on doing this, flattening a bit, setting off again, flattening a bit more. I mean, there is another road round, but no. Do you know what? I think we can get along this this road. I mean, I've just seen a track to go along here, so you know, surely this. It's not as deep there. Eh? Come on, one little, one more. Oh yes! Come on, come on. Oh, nearly to the wall there, eh? oh fuck. Try again. Oh, look at that! Hey! Way! Probably help if there was a way to turn the traction control off, then I could get a bit more power down. But see this bit clear. No oh, fuck! Traction control might have saved me there. Oh fucking hell! Hey, you know what it is? I actually really like this car. Like most cars I do on these videos, I was completely ready to just slate this, but it's impressed me. This could be the ultimate local car. Yeah, I wouldn't want to go on any long journeys in it, but for buggering about locally, this is ideal. I mean, it runs on fresh air. It can handle any sort of road conditions you'd expect in this country. It's incredible. You know, I would say that I've had more fun in this than any of those big stupid Land Rovers or pickup trucks that I normally drive. You know, I always fancied a Larder Neva, but this is probably a more economical and less rotten alternative. Well, there you go. If you'd like to ensure that your Aunt Dorothy gets to a WI meeting safely in any weather conditions, look no further than that Fiat. It can be yours for a handsome three grand under the new Tommy Otto's Pensioner Awareness Scheme. Scabs on my lips and I'll get in the air Oh please, don't just be nine pound Barrels on the bay Watch it shops, you'll need a bone Nine half beats on the floor Knocks you to grab souffle Days beat for me Hey oh, grab that truck Mark it so I don't want to suck Hey oh, 